Hey, what is up guys, Matt here. And in this video, I'm gonna be talking about Fluoridyl, which is another one from the family of antiandrogens and could be potentially utilized for androgenic alopecia management. Now, how good it is, what can you expect from it in terms of effectiveness? That's exactly what we are gonna be talking about in this video, okay? So this video should enable you to make a much better informed decision before you even decide to either give it a try or not. So let's start. This video has been brought to you by GoFiber. Enter your pictures and win a one year supply of GoFiber. It's easy to enter. Order a free sample, take a clear before and after pictures and send them to selfie at gofiber.com. Hey, welcome back again, guys. You are watching my hair loss and hair transplant related channel. So if you are new and lately you have been browsing YouTube and internet looking for some reliable information on topics like hair loss and hair transplant, like no BS content, then that's the right channel for you to subscribe to and also hit the notification bell as well, please. Also, don't forget to check out my website, mattdominance.com, where you can get my free ebook, five things I wished I had known before my hair transplant and also sign up for a hair transplant strategy session with me in person where I prepare you for your hair transplant. I share with you everything what you need to know before. I share with you what's possible, what's not possible with your current situation, what result can you expect and help you find the reliable hair transplant doctor either in your area or worldwide and basically assist you throughout your hair transplant research from the start until the end. Fluoridyl is branded as UCAPIL in two countries in the world, Slovakia and Czech Republic. It's not FDA approved, but it is approved by health authorities in these two countries. So if you live in one of these countries, you may as well go to the local pharmacy or even order it online without getting a pres without needing a prescription and you can get it. Okay, so it's possible. Or if you travel to these countries, you can get it here and bring it home. It's possible. So is it worth the money? I'm going to talk about it later. Okay, important point I want to touch on. Although it's not FDA approved, simply Simply the reality that it is approved by health authorities of these two countries I just mentioned already says a lot and it says that this drug Fluoridyl must have gone through some testing through some clinical testing testing and it was also the case so let me sum up what side effects did or did not occur with this uh, drug because as far as anti-androgens you know uh, ru58841 or clescotron cb0301 the ones that more of you guys are familiar with we're all afraid that if we use them you know we get sexual side effects you know our androgens will be blocked systemically and we will experience like some crazy ups and downs with testosterone and dht and our libido will go to zero and stuff like that so this was also the concern of uh, this study on 43 men that i'm gonna be talking about later and let me just sum it up uh, some side effects or some parameters that were tested during the study so pretty much uh, by daily application of fluoridyl 2% for nine months uh, in, this, in these subjects in the study, uh, there were no side effects on sexual function whatsoever, libido, they tested the whole hematology profile and blood chemistry, testosterone, and different uh, other different parameters, which were pretty much normal or within the range throughout the whole study. Okay, so that's pretty good. Although there were some fluctuations in the testosterone levels in males, uh, these were all within the physiologic range, so they didn't really uh, kind of find out any effects of, flu on, of fluoridyl on serum uh, hormone levels, so which is which is pretty good. Okay, so as far as side effects, this. Fluoridyl 2% seems to be pretty safe and well tolerated. They also tested it on animals first. I think it was in 2003, the study on animals. And if animals are known uh, for a much higher uptake or absorption of a drug topically because their skin is just different they are known their skin is known for six to ten times higher uptake of the drug compared to human skin so they tested that on rabbits and rats and they also didn't find any uh, dangers there any toxicity uh, or any skin irritation I think the next study uh, which should be done on fluoridyl should be a dose response study just to find out whether the higher concentration of fluoridyl is also like safe uh, because two percent is relatively mild concentration the best efficacy of fluoridyl seems to already appear at around the third month mark of regularly applying fluoridyl two percent on your scalp 
It was able to increase the energy and hair count in about 13% in the treatment group and it was able to decrease the telogen hair count in about 42% in three months. Okay. Why are the values in the placebo group also like pretty impressive, you know, almost like in the treatment group. Um, they kind of explained it in the study that the placebo group was getting like rubbing alcohol and that's also known as a vasodilator. And that's the reason apparently why also the placebo group got a pretty decent uh, energy and hair count increase in the first three months, which is like 10%. And the fluoridyl group was like 13%. So uh, that's pretty much uh, what fluoridyl can do. You know, it can bring more hairs back into the antigen phase or kick them uh, from the telogen phase back into the antigen phase earlier as they would have been probably kicked naturally uh, via the natural hair follicle growth cycle. So I think that's uh, the good thing about fluoridyl. But the negative thing is that it really appears that the its efficacy kind of peaks at the third month mark. And then if we observe the ninth month change, we only see like three, yeah, three percent improvement in antigen hair count increase and a ten percent improvement in a, a telogen hair count decrease. So it seems like its efficacy or effectiveness kind of stabilizes uh, from the third month on. Now let's talk more extensive about the study itself. Uh, it was a placebo-controlled study on two percent fluoridyl. It took for nine months, and we have two groups. Uh, placebo group, there were 20 guys in it, and then a treatment group, 2% fluoridyl group, uh, with 23 guys in it. The Norwood's grade of these guys was like Norwood 2 all the way up to Norwood 5, Norwood 5A, and uh, the fluoridyl 2% was applied every day, and in the placebo, the rubbing alcohol solution was applied every day day. Uh, next time I will probably recommend uh, another solution which is uh, not known as a vasodilator because then it just that makes the study a little bit more pointless, okay? Because we need a uh, placebo vehicle which has no effect on hair growth whatsoever, right? That's the point of the placebo. But anyways, what when we come to the telogen hair count uh, decrease, there is a more significant difference uh, between the fluoridyl 2% group, which is 42% decrease, and placebo group 26% decrease, which is still pretty, uh, pretty significant decrease. Nevertheless, what they decided to do after three months, they decided to merge the placebo group with the fluoridyl 2% group. So after the third month mark, we are only observing basically the fluoridyl 2% group, which has been the fluoridyl 2% group since the day one, and the new fluoridyl 2% group, which was the former placebo group. So they decided to do that because they were kind of like fascinated by the responses that fluoridyl 2% group got in the first three months. So they made the placebo group into the fluoridyl 2% group. I wished they would have let it go for at least nine months so we could kind of really compare the values at the nine month mark of placebo and fluoridyl, the real placebo, but they didn't do it. That's something that I was really interested, interested in. So that's kind of a limitation of this study as well. But uh, what the next part of the study still proves is that if the placebo, the former placebo group, that was placebo for three months, was put on fluoridyl uh, at the beginning of the fourth month, they started to experience some pretty noticeable benefits as far as antigen hair count increase and telogen hair count decrease. And it was 10% uh, hair count increase, antigen hair count increase, and 33% uh, telogen hair count decrease. If we uh, take a look at the fluoridyl 2% group, which has been fluoridyl 2% since the day one, we see only a marginal 3% antigen hair count increase from the month number three to the month number nine and marginal uh, telogen hair count decrease of 10% only uh, from the month three and month, month number nine. So we clearly can confirm here at least that what fluoridyl does seem to be doing really well or fairly good is to really kick uh, some of your hair follicles 
uh, back to the antigen phase from the telogen phase uh, faster, especially during the first three months of applying fluoridyl 2% regularly. So that seems to be something good about it. And if you, some of you guys who have probably tried it, maybe have noticed uh, that it really worked well during the first three months and then its benefits started to stagnate. Many of you guys actually did not experience almost any benefits from fluoridyl and I'm going to talk about that in a moment. I'm going to share with you some forum um, experiences or, or forum posts of some guys uh, who have been using Floridil in Czech Republic uh, since 2005 because uh, that's the country where most of the guys have started to use it uh, early on back in the days. As far as before and after photos, uh, this study actually comes with one. I think they chose like uh, the best possible response. So uh, I think this response cannot be expected by everybody, uh, probably by 5% of guys who use Floridil, uh, I guess. Uh, this is a six month difference and we can see that this guy had like a pretty large balding on the crown, on the vertex especially, and some diffuse thinning on the mid scalp, which improved after six months of regular Floridil 2% application. And also there is some obvious reduction in size uh, on the crown area. There is one more before and after photo on the UK Apple website where we see a uh, response um, I think 12 months before and after it's also like pretty mild response but it's uh, it's obvious that the guy responded well to Floridil also uh, so you can uh, you can see it here end of this video let me share with you like three or four responses from a Czech forum where guys have been using Floridil uh, since like 2005 when it got like approved by the uh, health authorities of Czech Republic and there is uh, like the first guy who has been using it in 2005 he's saying he's he used to use it for four months with absolutely absolutely no effect and also no visual effects whatsoever and he was promised that after the third month mark the hair will like no longer fall out and uh, he was like in the fourth month still using 2% Floridil and the hair was still falling out I think he was also just relying on the Floridil 2% which is uh, pretty much uh, something I would not do because I don't think on itself it's a like potent treatment. Uh, you could comp combine it with finasteride and minoxidil because these would have all like different mechanisms of action and they would target androgenic alopecia in another way. So I wouldn't just rely on fluoridil and I think uh, that's why most of the responses from the forum on fluoridil 2% are pretty negative because they didn't combine it with any other, um, you know, FDA approved treatments for hair loss for example he's another guy who's been using fluoridyl 2% for six months without any effects whatsoever and uh, further he says that he's been using like finasteride which is called like different in Czech Republic it's called Penester uh, and he's been using this one for three years and he was able to uh, stop his hair loss with it so uh, it did work better than fluoridyl 2% for sure and that's something that I expected of course because uh, it, it's FDA finasteride is FDA approved and it's going to be much better than fluoridyl 2% and much more effective. Otherwise, it, uh, it wouldn't, wouldn't have been FDA approved for hair loss. It was my take on uh, fluoridyl. Let me know how you like this video. Give it a thumb up, thumb up and comment below. It's going to support the algorithm and more of the guys will find out about my content because YouTube sees a lot of engagement and he's going to push my video a little bit higher than he would normally do. So thank you so much for the likes and comments. And uh, yeah, that was pretty much it, guys. Uh, I hope you will have a great day. Enjoy your day. If you are new to my channel, again, check out MattDominance.com. Uh, get a free ebook, Five Things I Wished I Had Known Before My Hair Transplant. And if you are already seriously considering a hair transplant and you are somewhere in the hair transplant research phase, be the beginning, mid or somewhere already like evaluating different clinics and responses you got from them. Uh, let me help you with that. Uh, you can do that uh, by signing up or applying for a hair transplant strategy session with me where I personally assist you throughout your hair transplant research so you can get a great result and you will avoid getting scammed or getting a bad hair transplant result you will regret for the rest of your life. That's something I don't want and that's why I want to help you. Okay, So guys, that was it for this video. Take care. We'll see you soon.